Hey guys, uh, you guys know that that editing guy Jimmy that Curtis is always talking about? Well, that's me. Uh, I'm the editor here at Lonely Sparrow Studios. Um, but yeah, I just figured I'd take a time to uh, introduce myself to you guys. Uh, so I'm sure that you guys noticed that I'm on the screen. It's pretty weird. Uh, so the reason we did that is because we're going to be talking about kind of like an editing process on a video that we shot. Uh, back in January, we rented a couple or a small macro lens, uh, and we tested it out. We shot some product videos and whatnot, uh, and one of the videos that we did was on an energy drink called Rain. Um, and I figured it would just be cool to uh, take some time and just, you know, show you guys what it looks like. Uh, if we can have the editor queue up the, uh, the video real quick. Wait a second. I'm the editor. Hold on. But we're just going to kind of take you through a couple of the shots and uh, how we got the effects that we did. The first one we'll start with is that intro portion uh, of the, the can kind of coming out of the, the water. Uh, so what I did is I'm going to start a fresh timeline here so I can show you guys. Create a new timeline. We're going to call it first shot. We're going to go ahead and click create. Uh, and you'll, as you'll see brings up an empty timeline uh, so then we'll go in here in our footage and I believe it was this one here so we'll bring that in here uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to slow it down um, because we shot this in 120 frames per second you look for clip attributes and as you can see this one's already set to 24 but normally it wouldn't be uh, it would be on custom you click it on 24 you click OK and then it should convert this to uh, from 120 to 24. Uh, and then if you want to, just preview it just to make sure. Uh, you just click the space bar and it'll quickly play. As you can see, it's definitely slowed. To achieve this shot, we actually took a fish tank. Uh, we adjusted the camera to the right angle uh, and then dipped the can slowly into the water. Uh, we gave it a little bit of a rotation too. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to click on our clip and you're going to take the rotation angle and we want this to be flipped completely upside down. So if you just go through and we'll get it to 180. As you can see, I can't quite get it to 180. There's an easier way to do it. You just click on there, type in 180, hit enter, and boom. If you want to preview it again. Boom. That can's coming up out of the water. Pretty sweet. But basically, you just want to find a good starting point. You'll click B to bring up your blade tool, or you can click this little button right here. And you just click on where the red line is where you want the start to be. And then you'll play it through. And we'll say we'll give it a couple seconds so we can do a reveal here. That's a good spot so we'll cut it there and then you can either click back on this cursor it's a selection tool or you can click a and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and right click here and cut or you can just control x cut that end piece same thing here but what we're going to do is we're going to right click and ripple delete which what ripple delete does is it'll delete it and move everything behind it directly to the front so boom See how it moved it all over to the left. And now, all we have left is this shot. Let's do this shot here. I'm going to make a new timeline again. Create a new timeline. Call this one second shot. Click create. Open up a blank one. 
go up to our footage and we'll find that shot again uh, which you can see the preview up in the top or if you want to you can double click it and then you can preview down here so that was our shot it's a little longer than, than what we had already so what we'll do is we'll find that spot here's what we did differently on this one and the reason I didn't have to cut it down here uh, so when you're previewing the clip, you'll see this little timeline right here underneath your previewed clip. Uh, so what you can do is you can find that spot that you want to bring it in. So I want to bring it in just before it comes, come, drops in. So I'll go back and you can hit I for in. And then you'll go down to where you want to cut it. So I want to cut it about right there. I'll hit O for out. And that puts the out point. And then now whenever you, you're going to drag from your preview clip up here, it will uh, drag only what you have put in and outs on. So what we'll do is we'll scroll where we want to make our glitch again. We'll blade or B. Make our cut. Go up here. Find our... This time we'll go with a camera shake on this one. And we will drag it, bring it right in there. And then boom, it adds a cool little camera shake effect. That's pretty much it for that clip and how we edited that one. Pretty simple on that one. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll go back to the original uh, and I'll show you probably the most in-depth clip that we'll show you guys on this one and that's this can splitting with the oranges so for this one uh, it involves some masking techniques and a background um, so first off we will start a new one can you guess what we're gonna call this one definitely not third shot we're gonna call this one splitting of the cans For fun, why not? Great, as you can see I already had it in and out. So I'll just drag and drop that down here. Already got it slowed down. To mask it, we'll go to the color tab. What we'll do is we will go to this little window right here, which is, well, it's called window. We'll click on our pen tool uh, and then you'll just kind of roughly outline your can and as you can see up here it's got the can masked out you can see a little preview of what it's gonna look like right there um, so what you'll have to do there is you will have to add an alpha output and as you can see it puts this little blue circle down here you want to drag a line from the blue square to the blue circle and then as you can tell it blocks out the entire background. The hard part is that it looks a little rough around the edges. So what you want to do in order to keep that from looking that rough uh, is you'll go back into this little thing, uh, to this window, sorry. Um, and you want to adjust your softness. Bring it up a little bit. You have to play around with it a little bit. Maybe switch between the windows because that line's going to get in your way. Uh, and basically adjust it until it just looks smooth. Boom. Looks a lot smoother around the edges now. Alright, so we skipped the, uh, the headache of watching me have to key out each one, uh, each frame. Um, so what we're going to do uh, is I got that framed. We're going to move that up because what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to stick a background behind it. We've got a bunch of different ones that we, we tried and we just kind of like the look of this particular one. Uh, so now, since we keyed that background out, it's in that background. And you can extend this clip as far as you want to. Uh, but in order to create that explosion, uh, you need multiple cans. So what we did is I would go and copy this one. And then we will paste it. Oh, didn't want to paste it. So we'll paste it next to it and just drag it on top. And I'm just going to show you one can for now uh, because obviously you do the same thing for anyone you would want to copy uh, so your top one is going to be the one that is your highest layer 
So if you want the can to explode from behind it, you're gonna to wanna to select this bottom one. You're gonna want it to pan out from in front of it. You're gonna want this top one. Uh, so we're gonna want it to explode from behind it. Um, so I'm gonna take this bottom clip and what we'll do is we'll go over to the transform window uh, and we'll select its position. So see how it slid out from behind there? We're gonna move it to the right. And then if you want to add any rotations, uh, you can. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, so we're not going to do that though. Um, and then same with zoom. Uh, you can add it zoom. Uh, and one of the biggest things you're going to want to pay attention to is how do you get the motion? Because as you can tell, they're just stagnant. Uh, so that's where keyframing becomes your best friend because what you'll do is you can set say let's move that can back so I'm gonna undo what I did so the cans back to the original spot we want it to start exploding right here so what you'll do is you'll come up over here in your position you'll click your keyframe so it'll start there and then you'll come out and say you want it to be at its end point right here click another key point and then you're going to want to move it so we know that by the end when it gets to that point it's going to be right there so now when you're dragging it you can see that it's moving on its own and that's because of the keyframes and you can do the same exact thing with your zoom and your rotation angle we want these keyframes to be the exact same spot we'll set those keyframes so we're going to have this for fun, we're going to have it zoom backwards and we're going to have it rotate. And if you really want to have some fun, you can spin it all the way around 360 degrees at that point. So now when we watch it, see how it zooms back and 360 degrees? Pretty cool. All right guys, so that's pretty much a quick little show of how we edited that video. Um, if you guys liked it, uh, go ahead and like it. Uh, and then, I mean, if you guys wanna know more about it or anything specific that we did with any of the other shots, uh, just go ahead and comment down below. Uh, maybe we'll retouch on this video at some point in the future and show you guys some of the editing techniques we use in the other stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys could, uh, please go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, again, thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, and that's Jimmy with Lonely Sparrow Studios on editing. <laughs>